Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to work on making the actual axe work and hopefully also get to damaging some trees. Now first things first, let's set up so that the axe does a little animation. Now bear in mind I'm really, really as far from an animator as you can get. So let me try and just put the axe into the item point here and just set it to 0, 0, 0. So that we have it in how it's actually going to be in the game. So this is pretty much where it would be sitting in the game currently. And I think what I want to do is I want to add onto the body uh, an animator and I want us to be able to essentially animate uh, this. So let's go to window animation and let's open up, I guess, the animation window here and let's plop it down here and let's create a new animation for this axe body. So I'll hit create and let's in the assets art. I'll just we have the animation already. I'll have one here for tools and I'll just call this like the axe swing or something like that. Cool. So now what we can do is we can essentially record how we want it to be. Now we already want to add some properties immediately, which is the position and the rotation. So I'll add in the position. I'll add a property also of the rotation. And with this, I now want to sort of swing it down, I guess. So here we can see this is over essentially one second that this is running. And within the first, let's do 0.10. I want to uh, hit record here. And I want this essentially moving down to somewhere around here so that you know the axe kind of will will lay down in front of me maybe something like this i don't know you'll, you'll get the idea uh i'm not here to make things pretty i'm here to make it work uh, let's maybe also swing it out a little bit out to the side something like that and then we'll swing it over and back so let's do that let's do a swing over here so it'll essentially be swung over maybe a bit down and i think something like this would do the trick so now let's see how that looks so it'll do up a little swing like that and that looks really stupid but i am gonna keep it <laughs> i want to make it maybe a bit quicker so maybe something like this maybe make it one more swooping motion like that i think that works pretty well i'm just gonna keep that somewhat i'm also gonna take it right in here in the middle and just move it to where it was i just want to see how that looks i think that looks better cool all right so now we have this little animation here it's not amazing but it's indeed there um, and as you can see with the axe swing we also have this little body that now has the axe swing in here now i also want uh, an empty state which will just be sort of it idling and this should be the default state and then it can make a transition in here and make a transition back afterwards uh, and what should be making the transition should be this trigger which should be let's just call it do action for example something like that and then in here what we can do is we can remove the exit time and we can have do action and then when it goes back, it'll essentially just have it. We wanted to have exit time because we wanted to do it by the end of the animation. So hopefully this will work for us. Let's try it out now. See how something like this works uh, on the tool. What I want is I want a reference to the animator. I'm going to do a private animator, which will be our animator. And on that animator, I'm going to do set trigger. And I think we called it do action, right? if I'm not completely mistaken. So we called it, yeah, do action, cool. So now if we, oh, and of course I need to reference the animator into the prefab items, the axe. And of course I wanna reference the animator on here, which of course I didn't save from world space. So let's do that. Uh, I thought I added an animator. Oh no, that was the one on the player I added, of course. Uh, let's go back into the player prefab. If he's still, he has the axe indeed. We can drag and drop that onto that, override it and destroy it from the player. That, that should do the trick. So now we're in here, I pick this up and I equip it. There we go, and now when I hit, you can see it does like a, the swoop that we want when we want it to animate. So now we can do like a click and then we can essentially hit what we want to hit. Now, let me also just quickly go onto the actual action and see how it looks, because I realized that I might want it to go a little bit further than what it's doing here. Um, but it is a little bit hard when it's not on the player. So let me just quickly go and do that. And we can just speed it up. There's no need for you to be watching everything here. It's the same thing, essentially. And there we go. That's my new animation. I like that a little bit better because it goes a little bit further. All right, cool. Now let's get to the actual functionality of it hitting and damaging. So the next thing that we want to do, and one thing that's very important to note is actually if I go and pick up the axe here again, I equip it and I take it on like this. Let's go onto our player here uh, and you'll notice how the axe itself doesn't actually move the core object. I'm moving the body under it, which 
um, can be pretty important for our case here because the way that I would like it to work is I would essentially like a sort of wide span of multiple uh, sphere casts. Let me do something like serialized field, private list of vector threes, which will be uh, hit points. Yeah, that's pretty correct. Um, and what I'd like, first of all, let's also add a serialized field for the hit radius like this. And let's just set it to, I don't know, 0.5. And then let's do an on draw gizmo selected so that we can easily draw it out. And then essentially I'll do a gizmos.color and we'll just make the color red, for example, so it's clear to see. And then I want to loop through each of the hit points and I want to draw them in relation to our tool's position. So the way that we do this is I'll do gizmos.draw wire sphere. I'll do this at the transform.transform point and that'll be of the hit point in here and that will be with the hit radius. So now we can essentially draw uh, a bunch of points so we can see where we're actually going to hit. So let's go and set that up on the axe first. And the easiest way to do this is definitely going to be to just equip the axe onto the player. Now going onto the player, let's once again equip the axe onto the item point. Zero it. There we go. So now it's where it will be in our hand, no matter if it's animating or not. And I wanted to move through these hit points. So as you can see, 0 0.5 might be a little bit big here. Let's maybe do 0 0.3. And now we can move these points as to, you know, where it actually uh, deals damage to it. Um, one of the things I also realized here is maybe the actual rotating, oh, fuck that. maybe the rotating of the item point wasn't the best idea because it's not super clean now, but it's fine. We'll, we'll make it work. Essentially, I just wanted to hit in sort of a, a fan in front of it. I think something that goes out here to the side maybe, and we'll make another one that goes more to the left of it. And then we'll make another one that goes more to the left again and a bit more back down. Uh, to where it actually hits something like this and I want to hit essentially in this big swoop of them and um, if we go and remove the selected we will actually be able to see them uh, all the time if you prefer that you can have that as well um, and what we can do with that is I can go into the animation tab and we can go through the animation and see where it's supposed to hit so you can see here it goes out here to the edge of this which I think looks pretty good uh, it does move a little bit higher than they are so I think I'm gonna adjust them up so let me do that, adjust you a bit up and a bit more forward. Same for you, that's the wrong one. Same goes for you. And you will also be a bit more to the left. So I think maybe a swoop down like that looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, that kind of works. I'll increase the height of the last one a little bit, but you you get the idea. Something like this. So something like this should work. So now when we move through it, you should see that it kind of goes through all of these red circles and that's what it's gonna hit. And then it'll go back. And now all we have to do is we essentially have to time when we do hit these. So now that we have this going for us um, and we're drawing these spheres, I only want to draw them when selected now because I don't want to see them all the time. Uh, what we can also do now is we can do the uh, we can do the actual hit. So let's do a private private uh, let's do a private I enumerator just so we can do it over time. And we can do the handle hit, and then in here we can start the coroutine of handling the hit and we can also set the trigger in the beginning of this. Cool, now let's set up some other variables. Uh, so let's set up a private float and that'll be a wait before first hit, which can maybe be, that wasn't very long, I think in our animation, let's just try and make it 0 0.1. Um, and then we can do a wait between hits. So we can do serialized field, private float, wait between hits. And that can maybe be something like 0 0.2 in this case again we can play around with the mid editor now we do want to make the wait for seconds yeah i think that'll work wait for the first hit and we also want to make a wait between hits and we essentially want to just in a wake popularize them so we'll make a uh, wait between hits equal to new and then wait between hits time and we'll also make a new wait for first hit equals to new and that'll be wait before first hit. And now this is essentially our wait time. So in here we can yield return the wait before the first hit. And now we can essentially start iterating through all of the hit points. So we'll do for each of the hit points and this will be a hit point. Then we can essentially do the hit and then wait again. So we'll yield return and then wait. And so we'll first do the hit. So let's first take get the hit position and let's do that by doing exactly what we're doing down here. So we're doing the transform.transform point to our hit point. 
like that. That should essentially give us the position. And now we want to figure out what we hit by doing a physics.overlap sphere. Um, and I want to do an overlap sphere non-alloc, just because that's a little bit cleaner. This does, however, require that we keep a collider array that we can just call colliders. And we can set that equal to however much we expect to hit at max. I think just doing something like 15 should be plenty. Um, and I think with the non-alloc, we need to feed it the array, if I'm not wrong, like this. And now this means we know how many collisions we have inside the collider. So we can for loop through it. And um, we essentially want to do it the colliders amount of times. I think let's call this hits instead of colliders. Um, because this is essentially how many hits we have. And now this can be the actual hit, which can be in the colliders at position I. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. So now we essentially know uh, that we can get what we can hit. Uh, and now I want to figure out what we want to be able to hit. Um, because now we need to essentially do what we wanted to do. We want to do a, like a trigger component on the hit, um, but we still don't have anything to actually damage. Now, I think what it was trying to do actually made a lot of sense, uh, essentially making an interface of something that can take damage. So I think let's do that. Let's make a new script that will be I damageable. And this will be an interface. So this will be a public interface, which will obviously not be a mono behavior. And all it really needs is it needs to integrate a public void take damage. And it needs to have a public void uh, die. Right, so that's all we want the damageable to hold of rules. And now let's make uh, a, I guess let's make a resource script, for example, or a, let's call it a world resource. This is what, you know, the trees will have, for example, the stones will have and so on. So we can have, first of all, this needs to be a network behavior. And we can also have this be an eye damage. This, of course, now means that it needs to integrate these things that we have right here, the take damage and the die. So I think, first of all, let's keep track of the health with the sync wire. So this will just be an int and this will be the, let's call it the resource, oops, resource health. And we'll just by default, wow, I really spelled that wrong. Resource health, there we go. And I want to serialize this to a field. There it goes, now we have the resource health. Um, and here we can, we can just deduct the damage, but actually we cannot because this needs to be handled by the server. So let's make a new server RPC with the require ownership false, just so everybody can damage it. I'll make a private void take damage underscore server. And this will be the int damage to take. Um, and I think let's keep it to ints actually. So the I damageable should not be a float here. That should be an int, which means this in here needs to be an int for it to not complain. And then we'll do take damage server, feed it the damage, and essentially here the server will calculate the damage that it should be taking. And then the server can also do if resource health dot value goes less than or actually it'll implicitly cast. So we can just do less than or equal to zero. Then we want to call the die. Um, cool. Okay, and of course, we also probably want to set up some kind of health that it actually should have by default, um, which can actually just be set up in here um, by the default. So let's just do, let's say 20 or something by default. And of course, this means now our tool also needs to have some kind of damage. Now, whenever that it actually dies, I'll just call destroy on the game object just to have it disappear for now. And let's also now in here, we can check out for I damageable. So this means that if we, let's invert that, say if we don't hit a damageable, we'll just continue. Now, if we do hit a damageable, there's a few things that I want to happen. First of all, I want to take damage and I want to be able to set the damage that we give. So serialized field, private int damage. Let's just set that equal to five for now. And we'll of course feed it the damage in here. But another thing is I want to make sure we can't hit the same thing twice which means in the very beginning, uh, I essentially want to just track uh, what we've hit. So I'll just make a var uh, hits equal to a new list of the type of I damageable. And I, there's a bad idea calling them hits. I'm going to call it already hits, something like that. And then the already hit whenever we take damage to it will also add the damageable. Not add range, we'll just add the damageable. Because now we can then also check if the already hit dot contains the damageable that we found, then we want to continue again. This way we can avoid hitting the same thing twice. Okay, cool. So now we should be able to hopefully damage our resource. And when it's damaged enough, it should despawn. Let's give it a go. So now let's go on to all of our trees and let's just add the world resource to it. And it should by default here be set to 20. It shouldn't be owner auth. And yeah, that should essentially be fine. Okay, cool. So now let's try this. I think the axe also, let's just give it a look should have now five damage. All right, let's try this. I take the ax, I go and I equip it, press one. And let's also actually keep track of this tree. So let's take this one tree, keep an eye on the value over here, and let's try and hit it. And there you go, now you can see 15, 10, five, and boom, it's gone. And now we can go and hit our resources. 
Um, one thing I did notice right now is I can actually spam the mouse button. We don't have any kind of cooldown, so we can just very quickly add that. Um, let's just add a something like serialized field, private, and let's just do float use cooldown. Let's just add that to 1.5 seconds, for example. And then let's make a private float last use time. Whenever that we use the item, we will then check if last, oops, last use time plus the uh, do, 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 or use cooldown is greater than time dot time, then we will return. Otherwise, we'll set the last use time equals to time dot time like that. There we go. So now it should have a little bit of cooldown. I shouldn't be able to spam it. That was how I could destroy the tree so quickly was because I could spam it, even though the animation didn't spam, the actual hit did indeed spam. Um, so let's check this now. Let's grab the tree again just so we can see. And I'm just going to spam my mouse button here. I'm spamming it now. As you can see, that doesn't work. And now it has to wait before we can use it again. All right. Well, that seems to work really well. I somehow managed to duplicate it. I guess we can look into that in a future video. I'm not really sure what happened there. Well, either way, this seems to work really well. I uh, hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something new every video. I hope this was helpful to you. And let me know in the comments what video you'd like to see. Also, remember to join the Pernet Discord. Other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day. Please do leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.